In this video we are going to review audiometry and how to perform the audiometry test within the new MedRex Studio software. So as a refresher, the ear anatomy consists of the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear has the pinna and the ear canal. The middle ear consists of the eardrum, the malleus, incus, stapes, and the eustachian tube. The inner ear consists of the cochlea, semicircular canals, and vestibular cochlear nerves. So sound waves are converted to pressure waves from the outer ear to the middle ear. And the eardrum vibrates, the bones vibrate, and they also send a pressure wave into the cochlea. Hair cells move in the cochlea and then send an electrical signal to the cochlear nerve. The nerve then sends the signal to the brain and the information is processed. Audiometry consists of air and bone conduction testing, as well as several speech tests. Air conduction is used to help determine the degree, configuration, and type of hearing loss. Air conduction thresholds are typically measured by using either continuous, pulsatile, or sometimes warble tones. They're presented to each ear by either far-field speakers, inserts, super-oral, or circum-oral earphones. Air conduction thresholds measure the softest detection of sound by the entire auditory system. Bone conduction testing is used for the same purpose. It's to help determine the degree, configuration, and type of hearing loss. They're typically measured using either, again, a continuous, pulse style, or sometimes warble tone. They're presented to the patient by a bone oscillator on either the mastoid or the forehead. Bone conduction thresholds measure the softest sound detected starting at the inner ear and then continuing through the rest of the auditory system. So when trying to record thresholds for air and bone conduction, there are two methods that are most commonly used. The first one is the modified Houston-Westlake technique, or it's also known as the bracketing technique. For that one, you want to present the stimulus above what is believed to be the threshold so that the patient is familiarized with the sound. If the patient responds, decrease the intensity by 10 decibels. If the patient does not respond, you want to increase the intensity by 5 decibels until they do respond. You want to repeat the process several times, bracketing until you get a consistent response at a particular intensity level for that frequency. The other technique is the ascending technique. You want to present the stimulus below what is believed to be the threshold so the patient is not familiarized with the tone. If the patient does not respond, continue increasing the intensity by 5 decibels until they do. If the patient does respond, decrease by 5 decibels and repeat the process until the patient responds consistently at a particular intensity for that frequency level. Within the MedRex Studio software, you will see the main page that consists of several modules here available. And depending on which equipment you have in the MedRex platform, you will see different modules displayed on the screen. To complete audiometry testing, you want to click on the audiometry module. And from here, you will see that there is a tone tab, as well as several other tabs that can be completed within this module. In order to test the audiometry thresholds, you can either test bone conduction or air conduction. And you want to do that by selecting the transducer here on the right hand side. You can also change which ear you want to present the tone to, what type of tone you want to present, and whether you want continuous or pulsed. There are several ways to change the intensity level and the frequency. You can use your slider here on the side, you can use the arrows up and down, or you can use the keys on your keyboard. When you present a tone, you can either click on the test button or you can press the space bar. If you press the space bar or click the test button, it will show you where that threshold was presented and it will place the mark on the graph for you. So we will mark a few thresholds here. 
and switch to the left ear, do the same thing. If there's no response, you can select this no response button down here on the right hand side and you will see that it will place the arrow at the bottom of the mark depending on what type of threshold you're seeking, whether it's air or bone conduction and whether you're on the right or the left. The same procedure can be completed when testing the bone conduction. All you have to do is select the bone conduction transducer on the right and you can use the same keys to mark the thresholds.